NSA, <laughs> hey NSA members, I am Melanie DiPoli and uh, I am here today with John Palumbo and we are going to talk about Instagram. So John, take it away, do a quick introduction of yourself and we'll dive right into Instagram. Well, I'm just a regular guy, NSA speaker and I've uh, been a member of NSA for many years. I've got my CSP and I travel all over the world speaking and I consider myself a photojournalist speaker. So that's as quick as easy as it can get. And I um, enjoy using Instagram and it's a pleasure to be here with you today. That is a, a fabulous introduction. Uh, how would you describe your Instagram marketing strategy? I would describe my Instagram marketing strategy as very eclectic, very different, and a different approach probably than most people. Um, I think the most interesting part of Instagram is there are no rules anymore. And you know, I feel like if Instagram had been created or something like it had been created 20 years ago, there would have been a complete set of rules that you had to go by. And so since there's no guidelines for who, what, when, or where, I don't know that anybody becomes the definitive authority on Instagram at this point in time in history. So what I'm going to give you are just my rules of Instagram, which may be totally different than what other people are doing, but they're my rules and they work for me. So maybe I will impart some ideas uh, for somebody else that they will be able to garner some good ideas from it also. And the key, the key point that you mentioned there is that they're your rules for your strategy. And that's what makes social media so amazing is you can have, you know, you can have one strategy, I can have another, and somebody else can have a third strategy, and they can all work for each of us. There's they no, exactly, they can all work. There's no one way, follow this checklist to do it right. There's no right with social media. I agree. I think it's what works for you. Uh, Instagram is a very personal app in that you create the personality of it, just like a human. And so every person creates its own genre, so to speak, and its own uh, life, by what they're taking, how they take it. And maybe just maybe by some of the rules that they follow and how they use the app to bring it more to, uh, you know, a humanoid type. Okay. <laughs> Very true. So how would you describe your Instagram strategy in relation to your overall social media strategy and then your overall marketing strategy? My Instagram strategy is simple. I have several rules that I have sort of learned and that I live by when posting. And some of those rules include, um, for instance, I always put a location uh, where, whenever I take photographs. And I always include in the location, if you've ever gone on Instagram, you know, it gives you a lot of options for wherever you are. I try to pick the one that is most appropriate and clearly delineates. If anybody goes to my Instagram uh, site, they will see that I've got pictures from all over the world. So it's important to not just have a suggested spot and that to get one. Uh, oftentimes I see uh, suggestions which will give a cool name, but it doesn't give a city, a state, or a country. And I think people like to know exactly where that photograph's made so that I don't have to mention it down into, which is my second part of my strategy, every picture tells a story. And while I see a lot of people who just post lots of pictures on Instagram, I'm pretty selective on the pictures that I post. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I post a, a photograph, uh, each one of these are rolling into different rules and strategies for me. Every photograph that I post, um, I've looked at very carefully, I've cropped it, I've edited it, and made sure that it was exactly what I'm wanting to put on there so that it is enhanced to its maximum value. Um, so that when people look at it, it sort of gets that wow effect. And that's really what I want with my pictures. Not so much for them as it's just for me. I just, I like to look at them and think, wow, you know, I really like that picture. And so in doing those, you know, locations are important. Every picture tells a story. I write a small 
dissertation or just a very quick and concise story. The story that I put with each picture could take me an hour to write for maybe four lines. There is not a person who's ever posted on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter that didn't jump out there, post something and read it the next day and go, oh, shoot. <laughs> And realize they left a word out, they didn't spell a word properly. So not only am I checking for grammatical errors, but I'm just checking to make sure that it flows properly because I don't want to have to go back through and re-edit a post. So I read it over and over and over. As the author of eight books, I've learned the editing process is far more than just the writing process. Uh, Ernest Hemingway said, write when you're drunk and edit when you're sober. So I sort of follow that mantra. Uh, I like to photograph, not necessarily when I'm drunk, but when I'm high on life. And I like to write my story very quickly underneath it, but I like to edit it later when I'm outside of the magical moment to make sure that everything matches up. So those will give you some quick ideas of, of things that I live by when I'm posting on Instagram. Those are some really great rules. They're very clear and defined, which helps hold you accountable to uh, – what you will ultimately decide to print or post onto Instagram versus what you may choose not to post. Right. Do you tie your Instagram strategy into any of your other social media platforms? I do. Um, almost exclusively. There's an occasion when I just don't feel like it needs to go on Facebook or Twitter, but, um, if you're on Instagram and you're either reading this article or you're watching this, any part of this uh, video series, um, you know that you have the option of tagging it automatically to Facebook or Twitter or Tumblr. And I use all three of those. So almost all the time I let them automatically go to those places. Um, Facebook being still another highly impactful place while I'm not, crazy about Facebook. I guess it's sort of turned into more of the mainstream for places to post things. So I do put things there um, really just so that the people can see them. But I'm not a big believer that you have to count on how many likes or clicks or people who look at things because there are a lot of people who just look but won't touch the buttons. They won't hit the like buttons. They won't hit uh, anything. And there's a huge difference between likes and views. Huge difference. Views are what you get a count on for short videos. And I will shoot short videos. And now that you can put those on Instagram uh, and you've been able to put them on Facebook, but you can see the number of views, which will quadruple sometimes 10 times. You'll get 10 times more views than you will click for likes. Mm -hmm. But here's something that most people don't realize, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or any of the others. If you get 30 or 40 likes to a picture, you can rest assured you can multiply that number potentially by eight to 10 of people that saw it. So if you get 40 likes, you had 400 views. If you got 400 views, you may have had 4,000 people actually view something that just skimmed by or looked at it. But you can't be discouraged when you only get a low number of likes because I travel, as I mentioned a moment ago, a lot. And I've gotten to where now, if, again, if you look at my Instagram page, you'll see there's a lot of pictures from different countries mm -hmm. and a series of things that I've done. And I'll talk about series in just a moment. But when I go anywhere now, I mean, I have people constantly, it is nonstop that says, love your Instagram, love your Facebook post, love the pictures from, you know, where you are really enjoy and so like so I'm thinking that I don't say that you know whatever likes you're getting that can you hold on one second there John and I just make sure that I stay constant with my things that my, I believe if you really want to do a good job with Instagram, you need to take a photography course. And I don't mean just a photography course. I'm talking about an iPhone photography course. There are many courses that you can get out there. You can look them up on the internet. But you can take classes on how to shoot better pictures 
with an iPhone, plain and simple. And it's amazing what you can learn and how to frame and how to find the right shot. It's not shooting the picture, it's finding the right picture. And when you see it, being able to whip your camera out and take it, that's the beauty of an iPhone. And then the second half of that equation for me was not only did I want to take good pictures, but pictures only go so far with what you're taking either with a camera or with a phone. So you have to learn how to be a good photo editor. Mm -hmm. and a photo editor allows you to slightly tweak and tune those pictures, cropping and colors and things like that in order to just give you a very crisp dimension of what you're doing. But again, those are two big rules for me because I have people ask me all the time, how do you get all these great shots? And the answers are simple learning how to shoot them the right way. So I highly encourage, if you're wanting to be what I call myself a photojournalist, which means somebody who takes photography and then writes journals with it. Uh, I believe that every picture tells a story, as I told you a moment ago. So you've got to be able to write something good with everything you're doing. So how about we jump over and we show your Instagram account and we'll walk through that and okay. just Talk about your strategy as far as uh, you, you've done it a little bit, but we'll uh, go through from the perspective of actually looking at the pictures. Okay. So you can give me your impression as you see someone. We can start with uh, maybe the very first one, the last one that was uh, posted. And, uh, okay. So I think I really that, I, that's a beautiful picture to me. To me, that almost looks like a painting. Um, I actually took that picture um, off of a small ferry boat uh, as I was pulling out of the harbor in uh, Idra, Greece. And it's exactly what you see there. The restaurant's lights are coming on, the sun is starting to set, and, and it's just waiting for that perfect moment. Uh, to me, it is just having the eye. And, and when you learn how to shoot better pictures, you learn how to have the eye for a better picture. Uh, and I think that's one of the secrets. If you're really wanting to do good photography work, some people may just be going, oh, I just want to snap a picture and post it. Well, that's fine. But for me, every photograph that I want to put on there, I want it to be almost a piece of art. And that's what that picture does for me. Um, I love it. So, um, it, it follows my rule. You know, I've captured the essence of a place that I was at the moment. You can see the small story that goes with it. It's just what I said as the restaurants prepare for another enchanting evening of local fish and wine. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, that's okay. And then, you know, I like to come up with a little thing at the very end, like I did there. No McDonald's here. <laughs> I think that kind of helps people understand the moment. I, I don't want to show, these are not vacation pictures for me. And I know a lot of people like to post their vacation pictures and oodles and oodles of them. That's not what I, my strategy is um, because I'm on a permanent vacation for life. So I'm posting pictures about life in general, not a vacation, not anything other than, hey, here's something that can give you a peek of another place where you are not right now. Mm -hmm. so they're, not, they're not vacate pictures for me. And I'm, I don't know how to, to put it, but... Um, I like to blend, I have an 80-20 rule. I do 80% personal, 20% business on my Instagram side. And so, for instance, that picture right there, I was uh, at an NSA meeting a few weeks ago and uh, my friend came up and sat down, you know, I was walking around and I said, hey, let me take a picture with him. You know, it seems silly, but I posted it not only here, but I posted it to Facebook and it just got gobs of likes on it from people, you know, because they see you're human. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that's important for me is for people to see that you're a real person and that you are a human and that you do things that are fun and you do things that are serious. And so this picture was strategically taken and posted to just say, Hey, you know, here I am having a little fun. So, you know, that's why I put it up there. I think it's a great picture. Now, the other thing I've noticed about your posts is you are very hashtag light. You seem to use about two, ha two to three hashtags per post. What's your yep. strategy on hashtags? Well, I see a lot of people who put 
a picture and then it's loaded with hashtags. They don't write anything about the picture. They just put hashtag beautiful flowers, hashtag, hey, <laughs> hashtag, I love the sea, hashtag life for me. And I'm kind of like, I don't have time to go through all those hashtags personally. And I see them, but I'm only going to put a few hashtags that have a meaning. Uh, usually one of them is one that I've created and I call it uh, JP World Trapper. Uh, and that way people can click on it and go real quick to some of the things that I'm doing. Very few, you know, anybody can post to it, but very few people will because it's pretty much mine. And then I put a couple of others that are relative to the picture. For instance, in this picture was a wedding crasher because I'd already written up above. I'm crashing the wedding. You know, now I'm having to act like I know this guy. <laughs> and, uh, and then I put up their big fat Greek wedding. I only want a few hashtags. Again, it's my rule. I know some people like putting 20 and 30 hashtags, but I don't want to overcrowd the page. I don't want to overcrowd all the different worlds to look at. I want them to be able to look at mine if they want to see a couple of similarities. I put one, I have this one, I have three. Sometimes I'll put four or five. It's rare I'll go over five hashtags. I'm just not a believer that people are going to click on all the hashtags. They're going to, they're moving through hash, they're moving through everything faster today. And so all those hashtags don't mean that much to me personally. That's why. So I'm curious, how did you get to crash a wedding? Uh, actually it was, it was a halfway crash. Oh, okay. Uh, they were, they were friends of mine, kind of. And another friend sort of imposed, they said, hey, we've got a friend here with us. Uh, would you mind if he came? And I said, oh, of course not. So it was a semi-crash and it was a great time. It was a Greek wedding. If you've never been to one, I encourage you and anybody listening or reading this to uh, take advantage of a Greek wedding. They're fantastic. This thing went till six in the morning. And from what I understand, that's pretty standard. I've even got some video i think may be here on instagram of it of some of the dancing and some of the things but you can see the first picture right there the one with the little couple on the bike um as i was sitting at the wedding and i didn't speak greek and i was sort of you know watching some of the traditional stuff happen um i thought i saw this sitting on top of the cake and i went over and took a picture of it and i played with this picture for at least 35 or 40 minutes before i posted it and uh, finally, when I got it right where I wanted, and after taking several pictures and keeping myself from getting bored, <laughs> I posted that picture. And after I posted it, I realized I've got a story to tell. And I'm going to do it tonight. And so if you kind of scroll through, you'll see I told the story of the evening there real quick. Um, go the other way. There you go. So I walked to the back where the restrooms were, and then I passed the kitchen on the way. And I said, oh my God, these are Greek salads. Look at this. And so, you know, I took a- That's a true Greek salad. That, believe me, if you blow the picture up and look at it, those are incredible salads. So I took a picture of those and you can see big fat Greek wedding. Now this is some Greek salad getting ready to be served. And, um, you know, I just, once I realized I was getting into the photography side of the wedding, I started having fun. And you can see I took a picture of the guys in the kitchen. They were so happy. They look like, <laughs> look like they're butchers. <laughs> they are butchers. But look at those knives. I love those knives. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, those guys look like they might be out of a haunted movie. Just kind of come on in. <laughs> So a side note, but it's totally relevant as to why I'm laughing. So when I was a kid and I would try to cut watermelon, I wasn't strong enough to make it through the whole watermelon. So I uh -huh. learned that if you hold the knife with both hands and you go above your head and you slam it down as hard as you possibly can, you can cut a watermelon in half. So I learned to do this as a kid and even as adult, I still do that because it's just habit and it's how I've grown accustomed to cutting watermelons. It's only recent that I've learned how to cut them properly. So there's a whole running joke anytime someone's over and we're having watermelon or uh, 
anytime I'm with a knife, because I'm notorious for talking with knives as well. And, and I'm like, I want one of those knives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I took a picture of some of the meats being grilled. I that thought that was kind of cool. And then, um, I don't know what the other pictures were. Let's see, go back to them. Yeah, there, there you are. If you click on the one with the dancing, mm -hmm. you can kind of get an idea there. That dance goes on all night long in the circle. And people come in and out of the circle and they dance. And it's just, oh. uh, it's fun. Let's just put it that way. It was fun. It certainly looks fun. So how do you track or how do you determine what is successful for you? You know, I don't know that I have a strategy for tracking what is and isn't successful because Instagram is so new and I'm a relatively new user to it. I mean, you can see this photograph that you, you've got right here. Uh, I took this in um, uh, Isura, Morocco, which is about uh, an hour or two hours outside of Marrakesh, Morocco. And uh, this guy was a complete ham. I mean, he just loved posing for the picture. And, but what caused me to want to take that picture was just the colors. You know, his, this color of his skin with the white headdress and then the blues in the background, this was a little jewelry shop that he had. And it just reeked and screamed to me to take this picture. And uh, he was pretty good about not making me do it quick, even though he probably <laughs> lost a sale or two from some jewelry to a few people. He was <laughs> making sure he had a really good picture. But um, I don't know that I try to judge success. I think everything is cumulative over a period of time. It's like, you know, writing books or doing speeches. You don't become an overnight success with it. You just do the best you can day in and day out. And then over time, you build a following. Over time, people begin to really love what you're doing. This, what you have on the screen right now, is an example of my 80-20 rule. Uh, I also will post some of my business stuff on there. And you can see here, Heart of Winter, Soul of a Champion. I'm with two other NSA members, and we travel all over the country with this program, uh, Meredith Oliver and um, Leah Turner. And so I will put an occasional uh, social media banner like this. I'll post it on my Instagram page just to let people know that um, I do have a living that I'm out there doing, <laughs> that I do some other things besides travel around and take pictures of people in cool places. Uh, so it follows the 80-20 rule. I see people who post nothing but business. And I also notice that a lot of people that are nothing but business, 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 get the lowest number of clicks and likes. And so I'm real careful to do a blending of people versus business. Uh, this was great. This was in uh, Greece. Again, I was out at a market. And, uh, you know, this guy, I said, you know, he wanted to know where I was from. And when I said I'm from the United States of America, he held up his glass and he said, you know, best wishes, salute, God bless America. So the minute he said it, you know, it just screamed at me. It said, I got to have a picture of this. This is great. And I added him to my album, my series. And you can see at the beginning, I call it Faces of Greece. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why it's not showing here, but where you see the little GR there yes. is usually a little flag that appears there, the little flag of Greece. It's probably because we're on the desktop version and not on the mobile version. The mobile version, it'll probably show it. Yeah. So in either case, um, that's a series that I started. And don't ask me where it came from. I just took a picture one day and decided that I was going to start a series. And um, so these were people that I got to meet and friends. This is an interesting picture, me and uh, Ellie. I've noticed that when you drop a touch of a picture in with a kid or a small child, those soar in likes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like, I mean, this one's only got 21 likes, but people mention it to me everywhere. They love the, the little kid. Who was it? Or somebody that doesn't know me real well will want to know if that's my child or my daughter. So, but it again adds the human touch that I'm after, that it's not just all about taking pictures of cool buildings and landscapes. Uh, it's a picture about people. It's about life. And, you know, the little child there is a good friend of mine. Um, 
there's again part of the 80 20 rule. There's a program that I was doing out in Las Vegas called Plan B Mastering the Art of Creative Thinking. So, um, once again, letting followers and uh, constituents and people that are out there know that I'm doing things uh, in a balanced way. And I think balance is a big part of Instagram. Um, not posting too many pictures of your dog, not posting too many pictures of your kids, not posting too many pictures of just any one thing, but just showing a balance. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's a picture there with me with a group that I was working with in Mexico. Um, you know, a team that I, I spent the day with, and I'm very good friends with all of them because I've been going to their uh, company for years. And so, you know, as you can see, it's just a, it's a blending mm -hmm. of people, personalities, and business, and sometimes just random thoughts. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Because I could look at your pictures all day long, and, and that's not going to help, you know, finish the interview. <laughs> okay. And so why do you choose Instagram to share these experiences as opposed to some of the other platforms out there? Uh, to me, Instagram is easy. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that, that plays a big part. I, I'm like a lot of people, I, I don't have time to post a lot. I don't even know how the president had this time to do all those tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even the president of the United States and I don't have time to tweet. Uh, Instagram is easy and it does allow an easy portal to express your photography desires. And um, so with that, I, I had the app for a long time before I started using it. And then I slowly integrated into it. And if somebody probably went back to the very beginning, you would see the evolution of how my pictures changed from when I very first started using Instagram all the way up to now. You'll see a dramatic difference in the storytelling. You'll see a dramatic difference in the posting of where I was located. You'll see a dramatic difference in the difference of uh, just everything that we've been describing, including I've created a few series, the faces of Greece, the faces of Morocco, I've got some other countries that I'm getting ready to incorporate that I'm traveling to. So more of those to come faces of X, Y, Z countries. I'm when I'm hearing those, that. by the way, um, one of the things that I'm very careful of is to make sure, and I don't mean this to sound too, um, I don't know the right word for it, but I try to take pictures, especially when I'm doing my faces of a country series. I try to make sure that I capture the, embodiment of people that look or at least what we might think look like they might be from that country uh, for instance you notice the picture we showed a moment ago um, the gentleman with the headdress on I mean if I said faces of Germany and showed that guy people would go that doesn't look right and so you know I try to look at people and go wow you look very Greek or you look like you might be from the country of Morocco now, whether that's applying some prejudice or some preset mindsets, I don't know. But from my mindset, when I see some people, I go, you capture the essence of the country I'm in right now, and I want your picture. And that's just sort of a rule I try to go with. Okay. So do you, uh, what third-party tools do you use to help you manage your Instagram account? I know it sounds like you use the native Instagram phone app and then potentially some photo editing apps as well? Uh, I do. Uh, you know, the iPhone has some, some editing capabilities. Instagram has good editing capabilities. Uh, Snapseed is probably the other one, and there's one or two others. I don't remember the name of them, but Snapseed's a good one. And I think there's one other one that I use, and if you, you know, as we're talking here in a minute, so I'll look it up and see if I can find it. But I use a couple of those apps to view the photograph under di different circumstances, different times of the day. But you can't edit a bad photograph. There's the key. So you have to start with a pretty good photograph to begin with. Then the editing allows you to simply do some enhancements to it okay. to help uh, bring out some more vibrancy or to crop out things that, you know, that were in there. I think a lot of times people get too far back one of the secrets to taking good pictures, especially of people, is you 
and if you're using your iPhone or, or an Android, you have to move in close. And the reason I'm bringing this up is most people will say, oh, you're getting too close, you're getting too close. And I always have to say the same thing, cool off. Just <laughs> let me take a picture and if you don't like it, you know, we can delete it or start over again. But usually when you go too far back and then try to zoom in, it's when a picture gets too grainy mm -hmm. uh, and you start pulling out the grain and you lose a lot of texture to a photograph. So a lot of people are not comfortable getting in closer to their subjects or the things that they want to shoot. And therefore they lose the opportunity to capture the real essence and vibrancy of some of the pictures. So I guess if there was any one thing as far as the tools and taking pictures, don't let that bother you. Be sure to tell the people, don't be uncomfortable as I move in a little closer for a moment, because you'll get much better pictures doing that. Perfect. And um, I think I asked you this earlier, but do you have anything specific that you track for you to help you determine if you're having success on Instagram? Do you look at the number of likes? Do you look at the number of followers? Or is that not at all your concern regardless? It's not, it's not really my concern um, because I'm, you know, it's like being a speaker. If you're looking for the feedback from people, you're going to be disappointed, especially when you get 20 people that say, oh, that's great. And then when that one comes in, it says, you suck. That's 30 minutes of time I'll never get back. I, everything you said, I've heard before. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get those occasionally. So as a speaker, I've learned not to get too wound up into how many people liked it or how many people didn't like it. Or if somebody occasionally, I get a crude comment every now and then, but it's extremely rare. Mm -hmm. And so I just don't look at it that way. Where I get my feedback and my motivation is back in the real world when I'm traveling. Um, sometimes even when I go places to speak, and they know I'm coming and they start posting some information about the speaker, I will have people say, uh, you know, I enjoyed your speech, thank you. And they'll say, but I love your Instagram. And I'm thinking, I don't even know you, but they will research the speaker a little bit ahead of time. And so my true gauge comes from something other than the digital world. It comes from real people in the real world giving real feedback mm -hmm. in real time. It's as simple as that. That doesn't really fit all the mold of what we're looking for in a high tech world today, but you got to be able to blend high tech with high touch. And I get more feedback from the high touch side than I do the high tech side. It also seems like Instagram is your outlet for your passion. It is an outlet for something that I, that I enjoy. And, um, you know, photography is something that I enjoy. I told you, I call myself a photojournalist now. Yes. So it shows that I, I take it a little more seriously because you know, I am a writer and I am a photographer. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's amazing. People will let you take your picture when you tell them you're with National Geographic. And, no, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm just going to say, wow, <laughs> that's an interesting strategy. <laughs> um, no, I just tell them that I take pictures for a series, that I have a series on Facebook. And I actually, um, when I tell people that I do photography and that I'm a writer and that I'm a photojournalist, um, they'll, a lot of times they'll ask, well, you know, are you on Facebook or are you on Instagram? And I say, yeah, and I'm, they'll go real quickly. I've actually had a couple of people that I did some photography work for that after four or five days, um, I'll use Greece as an example. They, uh, they'll go in there and they'll see all the postings about all these faces of Greece. This is so-and-so. They run a small business and, you know, they do this and they do that. I've had people write and go, when are my pictures going up? <laughs> when are you going to put our, you know, the pictures of me up? I see that you've put everybody up. What about me? Did you, did you delete my picture? And I'll write them back and I go, your picture's coming. Because <laughs> sometimes I may take it today and I'll post it four or five days later because if I'm doing a small series of something, um, yeah. you know, it comes later down the road because you could take three or four pictures in one day or you may go three or four days without finding the right portrait or picture. Mm -hmm. But I love doing series and I've only done a few of them, but I know I've got more coming of just whatever I want the series to be. And you know, it's the beauty of Instagram and how you post them. You can create a series of something and you create some followings. One of the things that I've had a lot of people say something about, and they say it laughingly, is at the end of my series on the faces of different countries, I always say, this is so-and-so, 
and I tell the story about them and I go, and they're a good friend of mine. And I've had people just laughing. What do you mean? They're a good friend of yours. I go, we're friends. What <laughs> hard is it? They say, well, you're friends with everybody. And I go, yeah, is there something wrong with that? And so that kind of just has born to be a small tagline that I put on every picture and they're good friends of mine. Example. I don't know whether you noticed or not, but on the picture of myself and uh, Chippendales, uh, not Chippendales, but Chip and Dale. Yeah, I think it's Chip. Because <laughs> right. I think Dale has a red nose. Yeah. And so you'll see at the very bottom that he's, a, you know, he's known by kids and adults all over the world, you know, and he came by to say hello to me. And by the way, he's a good friend of mine. <laughs> so now if I don't put that at the end, everybody, I'll get notes from people go, oh, are you not friends with them? <laughs> I have to write back and go, oh, I forgot to post it. So I have to go back and change the edit to write, and they're a very good friend of mine. <laughs> so, you know, it's just things that get people's attention. Yeah. And people like to follow somebody that has somewhat of a plan, even though it can be scatterbrained or it can be somewhat uh, eclectic in its thought process. It's still a process. And believe it or not, a lot of people – don't have the ability to even think through a little process of like of a, of a small little series or how they want to post pictures or editing pictures or having, you know, understanding just the cities need to be posted there because people want to know where it was. I mean, how often have you looked at a picture and go, wow, I wonder where that is. And if you want to find out, you got to write them a, you know, private message and go, where are you? Where was that? It's one of those things that we don't have time to do. So just tell them, tell them right up front. Yep. So you mentioned uh, how you'll share these pictures to both Facebook and Instagram. Do you notice a difference in how people respond to you on the two platforms? A little bit. Uh, the responses will be pretty much the same. And a lot of the same people are on both. But I do have followers that are on Instagram that are not on Facebook or Tumblr um, mm -hmm. or Twitter even. And so you, you do pick up different audiences from each different app and each different uh, world that you go into. But uh, Facebook will still get typically the highest views of people. If you're looking for clicks and likes, Facebook is definitely going to outrank everything. If you're not concerned with it, then, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, Instagram will get its likes, but a lot of people just won't click the like button on Instagram as quick as they will on Facebook. And I think that's because Facebook has trained people to hit that button far more than Instagram has. Instagram people are moving faster through it than they are Facebook. Facebook trains the eye to at least slow down and read some stuff. Instagram doesn't train the eye to go back through and read some stuff. Instagram is more of a just look at the pictures and move swiftly. Okay. So final question for today is what is your single best Instagram tip for the NSA members? Become a good photographer. <laughs> Learn How do I know that was going to be your advice? Uh, and every picture tells a story. So I'm going to kind of give you those two. Every picture tells a story. Uh, and balance. I kind of gave you three secrets there. But you have to balance, you know, not too much kids, not too much dogs, not too much business, not too much, you know, of anything. Come up with a balance of what you're doing. And there's the, you know, maybe that might be the, the, the biggest secret right there is balance. You know, come up with a balance of what you want to do so it's not top heavy with anything. All righty. Well, perfect. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, any final thoughts? Well, let me look at my notes here real quick and see if there's anything else I wanted to share with you. You know, I'm going to go down my list real quick. I've already told you that. that, 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 that. I never post a picture with blank. Just a picture with nothing. You mean without a caption? Without a caption and hashtags. I just don't do it. Uh, I see a lot of people that do it, but I won't do it. Um, always share on Facebook, create taglines, use, uh, consider myself a journalist, 80, 20. Um, I have four P's that I follow. 
Perfect. Right. Right. People, people, places, patients, and perspective. Mm -hmm. And with those, they're important to me because I want to take pictures of people and places. But you have to have patience to do both and to get what you're looking for out of them. And remember, people are going to your Instagram page for one reason and one reason only. They like your perspective. And that's what people want to get. They want to get your perspective. And so by following those four Ps, people, places, patience, perspective, it kind of keeps me in line with what I want to do with my Instagram page. And like I said, I'm in a very infancy with my Instagram learning. And I'm sure you've probably in your interviews found some people who are far more advanced than I am, but um, I like it and I'm establishing my own internal guidelines that will eventually, you know, cause my page to become huge over time. But it, it's growing at a nice pace. I'm happy with it right now. Perfect. Any other thoughts in your notes that you'd like to share? No, I like to create social media banister, banners. Uh, I, I put a lot of those up. The social media banners are part of my business postings and you saw several of them on there. So you'll see them sprigged throughout as part of my 80, 20 rule of, you know, uh, business versus personal and the uh, business posters are, I don't like to just put up a thing that says, oh, I'm going to be speaking here. The places where I go to speak, they love the social media banners. I customize them for them and I use those and use them in my Instagram to once again, show some balance in my life between fun and pleasure. People ask me when I'm going to these places, I said, are you on business or are you on um, pleasure? And I always have the same answer. It's half fun and half pleasure. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to have to remember that one. Alrighty. Well, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that was it. I was going to say that kind of wraps up my few notes. I hope you've gotten something. I hope your readers will get some good ideas and you're able to organize some of my random thoughts here into uh, you have been, you have been fabulous and you have a very targeted strategy, which is really impressive. Um, so thank you very much for everything you have shared. I still have your Instagram pictures sitting up here and every so often I move the screen up so I can see what's coming next. I'm excited to see what's next. Alrighty. Well, well you. all you got to do is follow and you can keep up with me. Um, I already am following you. <laughs> So uh, you'll get to see some stuff happening. You can always communicate with me when you see a new post. And uh, that is another thing. I usually respond back to people when they, they send me messages. I know sometimes people don't, but I like to respond back and answer a question, say hello. And it's just a way of reaching out to people once again and touching them. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, John. I really appreciate this. My pleasure. And um, I know we're finished up now. This article you're